ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದಂ ಪರಮಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಸ್ಯಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವಧೀ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ಎಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಲೈವ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಕ್ಯೂ ಎನ್ ಎ ಸೆಷನ್ ಪೇರ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಆನ್ ಕ್ಲಚಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಎನಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫೀಲ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಟು ರೈಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಐ ರೀಡ್ ದ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಶೇರ್ ದ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಕಾಗ್ನೇಟಿವ್ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಕ್ಸ್ ಐ ಗಾಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವಟ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಮಿ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಟ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸತ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರಿಟಿ ಮೋರ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾಥ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ನೆಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಒನ್ನೆಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಪರಮಶಿವ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ ಅನ್ಕ್ಲಚಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ desire to unclutch not to follow any thoughts emotions triggering of mind and mental activities inside even laziness is a mental activity tiredness is mental activity feeling bored is mental activity do not follow any of that just desire not to follow any mental activity and sit as you the pure space so just reminding that this is an open q and a session so if you have any questions about any sincere questions about spiritual truths i can share whatever clicks and cognitions i got from swami ji one thing i wanted to share um swami ji recently has been talking about pious fraud what is a pious fraud and before expanding on one of the clicks i got um uh, about something that swami ji shared uh, two days back the pious fraud is all about forgetting that you are paramashiva everything that makes you forget that you are paramashiva is pious fraud so always remembering that you are paramashiva you are the source of everything therefore you can change everything you can change your perceptions you can change the objective reality the life what is surrounding you in your life all these things we can change if we change the cognitions we have about ourselves and about life and about a universe the cosmos god paramashiva uh the world and us ishwara jagat and uh the self the jiva individual soul so always remembering that is the first priority if we constantly remember that then we uh we avoid falling prey to this uh pious fraud identity because once we start to um forget that we are paramashiva we can easily convince ourselves about something else but when we are when we convince ourselves about something else we avoid uh stretching ourselves towards 
the ultimate and we avoid experiencing our consciousness, our true self. Swamiji initiated us into the Mahavakya, uh, which is, you can hear it in the background. If you seek to find this Mahavakya, you can check the link in the description. On the Nityananda Media House in Kailash YouTube channel, there's various types. So just type Mahavakya in the search bar and you'll find them. And um, Swamiji initiated us into Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. So the click I got uh, recently about this Mahavakya is Om is Hinduism. Swamiji was saying there are a few things within the different sampradayas, different traditions of Hinduism. Uh, there are a few things that all lineages, all traditions agree upon. And Om is one of them. Om being the sound of the creation, sound of the universe. So Om is basically Hinduism. Nityananda is Swamiji, Guru, devotion. Devotion is very important. And Paramashivoham is the powerful cognition. I am Paramashiva. So Swamiji was sharing one of the powerful cognitions which I recently remembered and started to work with is cherish powerful cognitions and devotions. Both. Very important. To overcome patterns, to align ourselves to the various types of instructions Swamiji has given us, Guru Vax, uh, instructions from the Guru, so that we can raise ourselves, improve our life, and experience the state of bliss. One of the things which clicked with me was the Guru, the simple attachment, integrity, love for the Guru um, opens the heart chakra. The powerful cognitions shared by the Guru um, open the Anya chakra, the third eye. And when both of them are opened, then the Kundalini flows fully uh, throughout the body and uh, we experience the gratitude, the enlightenment, uh, the Sahasrara Chakra opens up and the Kundalini flows in the body. So that was under the, one of the understandings that clicked with me regarding the importance of devotion and powerful cognitions, cherishing both. Because depending on various situations, it, when we seek some form of emotional fulfillment, devotion, is the way when we seek some form of clarity some form of understanding in order to face something then powerful cognitions um, is the way so when you constantly cherish both when you consciously build both in your life you uh, you you experience that completion and with that completion you go beyond the dualistic logic you go beyond the mind and you experience your consciousness, you experience oneness with Swamiji. So just reminding if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. I can see the comments and I'll share my uh, how the different types of cognitions that clicked with me, which I can help attend to the question, remove doubts. So it's an open live session where we also do unclutching. So for those who are not familiar with unclutching, let's listen to a short introduction initiation into unclutching from Swamiji. Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, Triggering of mind and mental activities inside. Even laziness is a mental activity. Tiredness is mental activity. Feeling bored is mental activity. Do not follow any of that. Just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you. 
the pure space yes so let us sit in the space of unclutching if you have any questions feel free to write it in the comments I'll share clicks, insights, it can be questions about what I shared earlier or it can be questions or situations in the daily life, any sincere question. Yes, Nityanandam. What are the ways we can enrich and enrich to more people? How to break the negative pattern towards enriching? How to enrich? One of the main click I got regarding the space of enriching is you need to be in a space of wanting to make yourself available to people. Swamji was sharing that when there is completion, um, your heart becomes big, means you can accommodate more and more people uh, in your life. So enriching is a process, not only it is an expression, but I feel it is also a, a process of expanding your heart in terms of making yourself available to more and more people and sharing what, uh, what Swamji has given us to more and more people. Because many people seek these things, but for various reasons do not find an authentic source of knowledge and ultimately a source which can give initiations. Swamiji was sharing recently that initiations is the most important thing in the life of a human being. The purpose of a life of a human being is to receive initiation for the path towards enlightenment to open and for the experience of liberation to happen. So it's very important. Jealousy pattern dripped off after asking. Hmm. Yes. Jealousy happens out of comparison, Swamji was sharing, and it is directly related to the to the throat chakra. When we compare ourselves to things around us, uh we shut the throat chakra so that that's not good for the energy flow in our body and we get into a lower state of consciousness one thing i one thing one click i had was whatever we experience if at some point we experience some downs some lows or even some ups because ups and downs um, should be both dropped in order to experience the bliss of consciousness but uh, perhaps it, it's easier I feel to experience to work with the lows initially because the lows are the reasons why we most of the time go towards spirituality so because Swamiji says right it's only when life goes bad that you remember God when life is good you forget God so that is not the right relationship to have with God, but that is initially the kind of a business mentality um, that we have, that we cherish.
one of the clicks Swamji shared, which really impacted me and shifted my understanding and my awareness is everything that we experience we are responsible for it. Not only we are responsible for it, but we enjoy it in some form. Now, maybe in some situations that might seem hard to understand, but we should sincerely look inside our inner space and see. If I compare myself to some, if, I, if I'm stuck in comparison and I compare myself with people around me or things around me, or whatever it is, what do I gain by comparing Look, looking in and seeing like what is the what is the what is the gain that I have by doing that and if we look in a wide way we can see that we benefit from cherishing these um, these lower states of consciousness uh, these benefits might not be the right benefits but for us it seems like it is um, it is benefiting us. And always, like Swamiji was sharing two days back in the satsang, the only reality, there's three levels of reality. And the only reality in which we have power is in the cognitive reality. When you change the cognitive reality, your cognitions, when you work in the cognitive reality, you change your subjective reality, how you experience life and things around you, your, your perceptions. And when you change that, then naturally the objective reality, your world changes. If you change perceptions, if you change the way you experience things, then naturally things around you will also change in, on, on, on the physical level. So the cognitions are responsible for the experiences we have. See, for instance, if you, Swamiji was sharing, if you have a cognition like life is not fair, is a life image cognition about life, life is not fair, you somehow deep down truly believe that life is not fair. So when you constantly cherish the cognition life is not fair, you need to prove that. So if you start to engage in comparison by comparing yourself to things around you, you can prove to yourself that yes, see life is not fair. See, that person has this, I don't have. This person is like that, I'm not like that. This, so all these, this comparison dimension makes sense to you. Of course, it is out of powerlessness because the cognition that life is not fair is not truth and it is a powerless cognition. But if you cherish this powerless cognition, comparison makes sense for you. Because through comparison, you can justify why you believe that life is not fair. But Swamiji is initiating us and constantly uh, inspiring us to look into our cognitions and change them. Like, why do you believe life is not fair? What makes you believe so deeply that life is not fair? Where did you get this cognition from? And you can change it because you're a consciousness. Consciousness can change anything as long as you're aware and you remember that you're a consciousness. So looking into all these things um, is the way to to change your life and actually that makes spirituality very practical it is not a different world it is the same living in the same world but with putting your lifetime and energy your attention on a different reality not the subjective reality not the way you experience life not the objective reality not the things around you but on the cognitive reality how you cognize you and the world and people. And by changing that, you can change. Your, that's why you can, you can manifest anything. When you, when you can change your cognition, you can manifest anything. Because cognition is the source of the subjective reality. And the subjective reality uh, is the direct, 
it has impact on the objective reality. So if you want to change something in your objective reality in your life, if there are some things in your life you want to change, first you need to change the cognition. With the cognition, everything moves. So when Swamiji shared that, it brought a, very, a lot of clarity, a lot of understanding of, of how it functions and where we should spend our uh, lifetime and energy into. So constantly when you unclutch, you come back to your, your depth and in your depth, you can, you can see the different cognitions you cherish. You can, you can hear, you can grasp the different cognitions you cherish. And if you feel that some of these cognitions are not aligned to what you want in your life, then you can simply change it by de consciously deciding to stop cherishing this cognition and cherishing a powerful cognition instead. So we have two questions. Yes, I'll start with this one. Um, how can we do completion with someone who does not practice or believe in it? Like a household member or family member, uh, I would guess, which is not at all aware of any of these, uh, of, these of these teachings of Swamiji. So, so yes, the, ma the major click I got regarding completing with anybody pretty much uh, is you need to really see one of the things which Swamiji shared which gave me a lot of understanding was we do not actually live with the people around us. He says especially people who you live with for a long time within six months you have framed that person into your understanding, a conclusion you have about this individual, various conclusions, uh, like a compilations of conclusions. And after that, you live with the conclusions you made about the person. You no longer live with the person. So that was a very powerful uh, understanding which Swamiji shared, which really gave me a lot of insight. And from that... Um, the click is, I, I, in the Bhagavad Gita, Swamiji says that initially um, Arjuna is very confused and he asks many questions and, and, and Krishna initially is not doing anything. He's just listening. He's in the space of listening, allowing Krishna to, uh, allowing Arjuna to, you know, vomit whatever self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial he goes through. And only after that, Krishna starts to enrich. So the first thing which is very important to complete with someone is first you have to drop all conclusions you have about this person and you have to really when you when you live with this person you really have to see you're like how is this person what types of cognitions this person is operating from and the cognitions what I realized is that the cognitions we cherish um, are transparent in the way that if you are in, if you are in listening, if you're not agitated or not trying to get something or or have any form of vested interest other than the desi the desire to be in a space of listening for the sake of completion to happen, through the words and behavior of the person, you will be able to see the patterns and the cognitions the individual is cherishing. When you see when you start to grasp these cognitions, you will you will automatically know how to start to engage with that person in a different way to break the pattern of the relationship that you have with this person because with each individual uh, we we develop a, like a relationship pattern it's like we have a certain way of relating to each other and it's it's not always expansive and it's always the same thing it's a pattern so especially for someone who is not interested the gap is bigger because the person by default is not, does not even have some form of interest into, uh, into listening into the, uh, about this whole completion process. So when that happens, you have to take the entire responsibility because the person is not willing to do it and is not even willing to listen to anything about this process of completion. So you have to take the entire responsibility 
of the process of completion. So, um, I don't know, sometimes it takes more or less times depending on uh, of, of how much we are able to get into this space of listening with that individual. But first is like really not having any reactionary assumptions because when you are when you are always relating with somebody you have a certain way of responding you know when that person responds in a certain way you respond in a certain way and this pattern goes on so breaking these patterns and not responding not reacting is the first thing to do to give a gap to give a breathing space for both uh, individual to settle down within themselves and then start an interaction which is more completion based instead of uh, unconscious pattern uh, oriented uh, re reaction based. So it's all about it's all about first you need to really want you need to want to have to have completion with that person. When you really want to have completion with someone, you will take the responsibility, especially if that person is not uh, not interested. And you will start to first identify like what types of patterns you cherish with that being because we cherish patterns in all of our relationships we have different types of patterns. So first being aware of the patterns that you are cherishing in the relationship and may, uh, stopping these patterns because the relationship will continue to be the same if you cherish the same patterns. So you have to change the way you relate to the individual, the way you relate to that being. So breaking the patterns, I feel, is, uh, is the first step and, and, and just trying to really sincerely grasp the being in front of you. Like what is the being, you know, seeking? Because everybody seeks something, whether they are conscious or unconscious, everybody seeks or wants something. When you start to get into that space of listening, you you grasp the cognitions from which they operate and you can respond to them in the way that will be fulfilling for them. And when you start to fulfill them, they will start to listen to you more and more. But sometimes the way the fulfillment they seek is not the way you are uh, doing things. So it, it, it demands of you, you have to expand. You have to expand in order to give some form of fulfillment to that being because the more you can give fulfillment to the person in front of you, the more the person in front of you will be interested in engaging with you in their life. The more they will be open to listen to you and have a sincere conversation um, about anything. So it's, a, it's really about uh, finding that not like, breaking these conclusions we have about each individual because if we have a conclusion about them, then you cannot, you, you lose the space of possibility. You're frozen. If you're frozen, you cannot change the relationship. You can only change the relationship if you unfreeze yourself. So breaking the relationship patterns is like the first step. And after that is really trying to grasp the person in front of you. Like what is, the, like what is that, who this person or this, this being, what is this being seeking? Like what, what do they need? What do they look for? They do things in their life throughout the day, but what, 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 are they trying to, what are they trying to get by doing these things? Grasping that and giving them that. You know, sometimes some people, they just want to be recognized a little bit. Just saying them thank you or just saying them, oh, I'm so grateful that you're doing this for me. That's all they seek. Just a little bit of recognition. But you never realized that they, they, they were seeking recognition and you, you never recognized them because you had your own reasons of not doing that. But if you start to realize that, oh, this being really seeks to have some form of um, recognition. So start to recognize because that person will be doing some things. So start to recognize the work that that, being is, that person is doing. Then when you start to recognize the, 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 the work that this person is doing, then that person feels like, hey, nice. So the, the space opens up and then a possibility for more and more completion happens. And it, 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 it grows like this.
But for that, we need to really be in this. Swamiji always puts emphasis, right? Cause others reality. Cause their reality. Bring fulfillment to people around you. Look in, unclutch, be in a space of listening, grasp what this being is seeking and give that to the best that you can. Give that. And you will see that the being, will, the fulfillment you will give to that being will make that being open up to you. And then a new kind of relationship can evolve, a more healthy one, a more completion-based one. So that's what I would say for family members or even uh, people who are not, who you have to engage with on a regular basis, but, uh, but, but who are not interested in this and you have to, to continuously engage with them. I mean, especially with family members, I think it's crucial with family members. If you are, uh, if you are engaging with your family members, then, but family members is the most difficult part because family members, you've been around them for since the beginning. So the conclusions you have about them are very strong, very strong. So that's, that's, and that's, a, that's a form of arrogance. We think we know them, but in reality, we don't. We don't know them. We know the conclusions we have about them. That we know. But these conclusions are not in tune with the reality. And that's why we are not able to have fulfilling relationship or not that, that relationship stagnates or plateaus at some level. So for that, we need to realize that some of our conclusions, if not all of our conclusions, depending on the relationship and depending on many things, but these conclusions might not be 100% right. So you have to drop the conclusion and experience that person again. And like that, you will be in a space of listening and not carry some hangovers from the past because of some things that happened and then you came to a certain conclusion and then you've been living with that conclusion since then. That is not, that is not going to help to bring relationship to, uh, to fulfillment. So that's what I would share about that. I think it's very important if you are around your family members, you really need to to really seek. I mean, sometimes it might take longer or depending on the person and everything, but you should constantly hold the space. The moment you get initiated into this, these powerful cognitions, uh, you have to start to take the responsibility and uh, for the, the, the success of the relationship to happen. And you and you test, you know, also as you as you break the patterns, the relationship patterns, you test and see the response on the other hand. And but you're constantly in the space of trying to grasp the inner space of the person in front of you. And in, in when you are in that space, your listening will be your 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 li listening like the your, your, your space of listening in your inner space will be very uh, awakened and you will be able to grasp things that normally you never grasped because you were never in that space of listening with that individual. Yes, so we have... Another question. Um, I still have craving. I'm in a pot sannyas. I still have craving for veg food. Besides Nirahara, what else can I do? In Itanandam, what else can I do? I just completed my Nirahara. So Nirahara, for those who are not aware, uh, is a process where you go on liquids for uh, 21 days and you have three days of break within the 21 days where you can consume solid food. And it's a process to drop the hunger, uh, to attend to the hunger pattern, the hunger and anger pattern and at the same time, uh, break the addiction to solid food that we have and realize that the body does not need what we think it needs to function. Uh, actually, it needs a lot less to function properly. 
and most of the time we overload the body because we were not taught the right things from the beginning and we've created some life negative patterns in the way that we engage with food so um, craving for veg food I mean recently Swamji said one thing which really uh, clicked with me was if you if you're able to shift right away that's great if you're shift if you're shift you're experiencing some kinds of struggles don't stop have the will persistence keep every day have the sankalpa the conscious resolution to make it happen but you can break it down to some things uh, easier for instance like have Swamiji says have one meal a day before sunset for in, for in, so um so you can you can you can kind of train your body you can have liquids in the morning you can have a meal in the lunchtime or beginning of the afternoon and then you can have liquids in the night and so like that uh just expand the possibility of the body and and see how it responds and handle but keep that desire to make it happen because it's not happening right away don't give up and say oh I, i'll never be able to do it no have the will persistence and uh, definitely it will happen you can have there's many alternatives even foods the type of foods you consume can vary even for me uh, for instance before i used to consume potatoes and and pastas and uh, I stopped consuming those for the simple reason that I realized that whenever I'm digesting these foods, uh, it's a lot more complicated to digest. And Swamiji says, right, it gives that shit belly experience. It creates, it, it makes the, it, it. So I, I personally stopped consuming certain types of food because I realized that it was making the digestion a lot more heavier than it needs. That's why also sadvic food is so important. Sadvic foods are foods which can be digested quickly. Uh, tamasic food, which are foods which put you in a space of sleeping and drowsiness, such as potatoes, avocados, and there's many types of tamasic foods. Avoid those types of foods. If you want, if you want to eat solid food, eat foods which are very easy to digest. Um, each like one of the, for instance, vegetable which I find is like the easiest. To, uh, is very good and easiest to digest is zucchinis. Uh, it's like it's almost water, so it never loads. It never stays in, uh, as a load in your system, and at the same time, when you eat them, you feel the fulfillment of eating something, and so it it really helps to bridge the gap until you go beyond. Um, so so you have to test. You have to test things out. Uh, if you have an Indian background, I would recommend dosas. Um, I personally have great experiences with dosas. They uh, they are very easily digestible. Iglis, idlis also, and uh, if, if like otherwise rice. And you can mix also. You can make like a, you can you can you can mix rice and vegetables into a soup. You can make a soup and mix everything within, so it's not liquid. It has certain form of solid, but that solid is completely uh, blended. So it's very easy to digest and it goes through the system faster. So you can have steps to facilitate the process to go beyond solid food or at least to reduce the amount of solid food you take uh, in a drastic way. Um, so that's 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 how I've been attending to this since Swamiji has been doing it. Yes. So definitely attending to food patterns is a, is a, is a must. I, it's really a must in today's world. And if you want to be successful and have like very interesting breakthroughs in terms of experiencing your consciousness as a solid experience, uh, challenging the food pattern is must. So I would recommend that have, have, uh, have one meal a day uh, around noon, around beginning of afternoon. And then in the morning, if you if you can do not eating, don't eat. Otherwise, have uh, maybe some liquids in the night also. Recently, Swamiji talked about dry fasting on Mondays for Paramashiva because Monday normally 
the Shiva Bhaktas, the devotees of Shiva do fasting. And Swamji has talked about dry fasting. So I've, uh, yesterday was the second time I've done dry fasting in my life. And uh, it, it's a very interesting experience. I really like it, actually. The more I'm doing it, the more I'm liking it. So even now, um, I implement like I have a time of the day where I would consume uh, food or liquids uh, between 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Somewhere within this time, I'll have uh, one meal or I'll consume liquids. And then after that, I, 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 do, dry, I do dry fasting until the next uh, the next day so um, it's I don't know so you have to experience and the body adjusts you sometimes initially it's a big shock for the body and you don't know how to handle the body gets a little cranky and you don't know how to handle it but uh, you keep trying and it, it changes rather quickly I mean if you if you sincerely work on this within few months you can have a drastic food change within two three months you can have a drastic food change and that will help a lot because a lot of the food that we access today is not good. It's plastic food and it's not good for the system, uh, unfortunately, because we have stopped. I mean, all these corporations are managing our food now, so that's never a good sign. So so that's why dropping solid food is, is, is important. If you can have access to like local organic food, that is best. Um, otherwise, have organic food from the stores. But... Um, but really break it down to something that works for you. Break it down to, uh, I would say the first step is to go from three meals to one meal. And the two other meals can be liquids. If you're having a hard time to manage, you can do like blended stuff, like soups with uh, blended rice or blended and, and, and vegetables and stuff like that. So it's like thick. So it gives you the feel, it gives you the experience of, kind of being full but at the same time it goes through the system much faster and in a much less energy in a more energy efficient way than solid food because the body does not need to digest spend as much as as much energy as it would spend if it was solid food and then after that you can change you can remove these these uh, blended mixes and just have liquids like soup broths or the fruit juice and all that and then you can, you, you can just have step by step. And if you do that, I mean, within three months, you can have drastic change. And that will help you in many ways for many other things. And especially to have more mental clarity. And you'll be more active, more alive, more able to focus, more able to, uh, you know, many things. So it's very, very important. Yes, hi. Tiandam. Interesting question here. How to complete with my gender? So let's just for a few minutes, few moments, uh, listen to Swamiji and do a little bit of unclutching. Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, triggering of mind and mental activities inside. Even laziness is a mental activity. Tiredness is mental activity. Feeling bored is mental activity. Do not follow any of that. Just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you. The pure space. Yes. So that's a very interesting question. Actually, I like it very much because it's a very important thing, especially like for people who want to become brahmacharis, how to complete with your gender. So the first click I got is that stop believing that you need the other gender to feel complete. That is delusion. If you want, to have other gender because that's the lifestyle you want to live, that's different. But don't think it is mandatory. It is not at all mandatory. It is only conscious decision. 
and but we are taught the opposite we are taught that you know male needs female for the completion to happen female needs male for the completion to happen which is total lie um so that's the first thing you have to constantly remember because at some sometimes when your hormones will go crazy when the body uh, goes through hormonal ups and downs all these cognitions about needing the other gender will be strongly activated and you 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 will strongly believe that your life would be better if you had the other gender around you uh, but that's not true it's just a chemical ups and downs in the body and you should just more focus on how to manage your hormones so you don't have these hormonal hormonal gushes inside your system uh, which makes you want to um, makes you want to relate to the other gender in various forms um, and for that detox is very important hartaki neem juice uh, castor oil and reducing the amount of sleep uh, that really helps to start to uh, attend to these cognitions actually swanji was sharing a female body is 51 percent female 49 percent male a male body is 51% male, 49% uh, female. So it's not like you're entirely male and you and you you're, no. It's it's only like a one percent different. It's a two percent gap. So um, so you have to remember that, and we have to break. We have to drop this cognition that we need the other gender to be complete. Uh, and she, Paramashiva takes the form of Ardhanarishwara where he is half female, half Devi and half Shiva to display that truth, to embody that, that cognition, that reality that the Shiva and the Shakti uh, both exists within you and they have, to, they have to unite within you it is not about uh, it's not about the external world now if you want to engage like that in the external world that's different that's your that's your decision then that's that's your decision but you should not feel like there's no other option because that is totally not true there are other options so completing the with the gender brings tremendous freedom because uh, because completing with the gender is like it's one of the most fundamental, it's like one of the core cognitions we have, we operate. There are some very core cognitions we operate from, which are totally false, but we are operating from them. For instance, you know, I am human, you know, I, 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 this body is the most important thing. If this body is hurt, then that's not good. If this body is not going well, then it's not good. Uh, I am male, I am female. These cognitions are very, very, very deep, rooted very, very deeply inside of us. And to uproot them, you need to have like a lot, of, you have to be very ferocious with yourself. But if you do uproot them, then you will experience a kind of freedom that you can never dream about. Uh, it's like, it's a totally new world. It's a different world, literally. So Anji, one time he shared in satsang, that was the most epic thing. He was sharing somebody was keep spa spamming his Facebook account and saying, oh, what is wrong in finding your other half? Why don't you want to find your other half? And that person was constantly nagging Swamiji about finding his other half. And then Swamiji came in satsang and said, okay, I'm going to answer this question once and for all. I'm going to do it in satsang because that person would most likely be watching. And at the same time, uh, everybody will uh, be very clear and everybody will also catch this cognition. And he says, I do not seek my sec my other half because I am not half. I am complete. So remembering that you are complete is fundamental for you to free yourselves from your gender identity. Because by default, the gender identity is dualistic, male, female. So by if you accept any of these identity, by default, you fall into the dualistic logic. Now, and if and we fall into it in a very unconscious way, we don't realize it. And then you're stuck in the dualistic logic and the dualistic logic will never bring fulfillment in your life. It will bring co conflicts. Uh, it will just bring ups and downs and conflicts. So we have to drop from that dualistic logic. And for that, uh, you have to, uh, yeah, you have to free yourself from your gender. Swamiji did not expand. Uh, he expanded on genders 
uh, saying that there's and there's different types of genders also there there's three components to the gender there's the physical dimension psychological dimension and physiological dimension so you can be male 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 female male male female 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 male you can have permutation combinations of these three these three levels can be male or female and so that creates 11 genders so there's 11 types of genders uh, but all of this gender hood is not an ultimate truth the ultimate truth is that you are Nityananda Paramashivam you are Paramashiva so uh, so it's very important to to remember that and implement that implement that in the way that you cognize things around you in the way that you make decisions uh, about what to do when to do it why you're doing it like you need to bring awareness to what you, why you do what you do why are you making these decisions and sometimes you should if your decision seems wrong you should question yourself and say oh why am i making this decision that doesn't make sense that doesn't seem to be you know aligned to what i want to do so you have to keep the seeking alive and question yourself and really see like what are you doing with yourself does it make sense or not because there's many things we do which do not make sense but we fail to see it and that's why we're, we don't change so you have to really look in and say oh this is like why am i doing this and then decide consciously do i want to continue to do this or do i want to change and if you want to change like in what way you want to change so what will be the best decision to take from there onwards so all this process should be happening on a daily basis uh, yes should be happening on a daily basis for us to remain alive to keep the consciousness experience alive when you constantly seek you you're more interested in engaging with life when you're seeking is alive you're more interested in engaging with life when you have too much frozen conclusions you get bored and, and you get tired because you know everything because that's the delusion conclusions make you think conclusions always makes you believe you know so when you think you know then there's nothing else to do so you start to cherish boredom and tiredness but so as you shared in the in that small even that unclutching uh, initiation clip uh so you shared that tiredness and boredom are mental activities and they should be unclutched from we should unclutch from them they're not real so um so yes i think uh liberating yourself from the gender identity is the most beautiful thing it's the most intense thing because we are truly attached to our gender our cognition our cognition or our gender oriented cognitions are very very strong but if you tackle these cognitions with powerful cognitions and change them your life will change your life will change big time and uh, a lot of a lot of things a lot of fulfillment will happen a lot of fulfillment that you cannot imagine before you start to do this completion you cannot imagine there's many things you do in your life to seek fulfillment but no matter how much you do these things you will never have that fulfillment but when you do that gender completion all these fulfillment starts to happen you don't even know how like it does not even make sense but it's happening and you can experience the fulfillment and the bliss and the freedom and the the, yeah so it's it's a very nice thing yes so if anybody has any other question feel free to write it we'll watch near the unclutching video again 40 seconds decide to unclutch not to follow any thoughts emotions triggering of mind 
and mental activities inside even laziness is a mental activity tiredness is mental activity feeling bored is mental activity do not follow any of that just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you the pure space Clutching is very important to go beyond thoughts and emotions to bring completion in our thoughts and in our emotions. When the completion with our emotion happens, the heart becomes strong. We can handle life. Guts also become strong. When we have completion with our th- our thoughts, we gain clarity and understanding about life, about us. which helps us to engage with life uh and make decisions better decisions so it's very important that's also one of the thing which uh like i was sharing at the beginning of the stream um om nityananda paramashivoham devotion and cognition nityananda is guru swami ji having devotion towards guru brings emotional fulfillment powerful cognitions bring fulfillment to our uh thoughts it it completes our thoughts it removes our thoughts and it establishes us in the space of powerfulness in the space of paramashiva paramashiva is all powerful omnipresent omniscient so uh and that is us and and re- and forgetting that this is our nature or our identity our true identity is bias fraud so we should not entertain this bias fraud uh identity and we should break free from that one of the thing which is swamji was sharing a few days back which really impacted me is that he was sharing how this making serving others pious is a crime no sorry making serving serving the poor is a crime because when you make serving the poor sacred you maintain the situation of poverty alive but poverty should never be alive hinduism is not about cherishing uh sacredness towards serving the poor no it is about enriching everybody so that everybody can manifest the reality they want for themselves so so that the poverty poverty disappears and that is why india was the richest uh what richest place on earth before the invasions the brutal barbaric invasions uh because there were there was there was no such thing as poor people the british man when they came they 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 were saying that they don't have any upper and lower class they don't have these things everybody is every nobody is poor nobody is in the street begging and all these things like it was not there it is only after the british invasion that all these things happened and that's a different story but and that's where the holocaust started uh, not started i mean it started before but that was a, a big chapter of the hindu holocaust was the british invasion and and uh, and why because hinduism is all about enriching people around you it's not about making serving poor sacred serving the poor is not a sacred happening raising the poor from its poverty is what's important enriching the poor so that he no longer manifest poverty he manifests what he wants instead of poverty so that's 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 the fundamental thing fundamental click i got from what some of you are sharing so so serving the poor is this pious fraud identity right you look so good it looks so good to serve the poor it presents so well you're just like oh my god that person is so good but if you look deep down that person is not helping the poor person to get out of its poverty you give a meal to a poor person today tomorrow he's still going to get stuck so instead of giving inst- that does not mean you should not feed the poor in the process of raising them no swamji says you should do both you should give the fish and you should teach how to fish so until he knows how to fish you should give the fish 
but you should constantly teach how to fish also so that at some point he no longer needs your fish he can fish on his own so um so that's why of course that's an analogy we don't want to kill any fishes and everything and we do not consume non-veg and all that but it's an analogy because that's a popular saying but what it means is that you should enrich the person constant you should support the person for his survival needs um, in the best way that you can but at the same time you should enrich that person and at, so that at some point the person knows how to manifest their life and they don't need to cherish the powerless cognitions which are responsible for their poverty anymore so that's the real work uh, that's the real work getting rid of this pious fraud identity is the real work Yes. So a little bit of unclutching again, Swamiji. Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, triggering of mind and mental activities inside. Even laziness is a mental activity. Tiredness is mental activity. Feeling bored is mental activity. Do not follow any of that. Just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you. The pure space Yes. So, with this, we're going to close today's session. Inviting you to join tomorrow, similar timings. Um, if you have any questions, if you face anything during the day, if you seek any form of uh, new spiritual perspective on certain situations, which are making you feel some form of struggle or powerlessness you can share I'll share whatever clicks I got from what Swamiji has shared with all of us so with this we're going to close with the Purna Mantra Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Sarvam Bhagavat Shri Nityananda Paramashivam Padukar Panamastu Om Nityanandam Yes, thank you for watching and again hoping to see you tomorrow for this live question and answer session paired with unclutching. So with this, I'll see you soon. Nityandam, be blissful.